Cross Beats Production What's going on here with Nate to Wait, and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to say thanks to you guys for everything you did in 2017 as far as your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, uh, just showing me love on this channel in general and um, having a family-based uh, content that I create on this channel. It's been a while, I haven't created content uh, for probably a couple of weeks now and I wanted to get back in, in the role of things and start a new series as well. And the series that I want to start is based on this track that I've worked on. I actually created this track over the Christmas break just for something fun to do and um, it was too hot to go outside. You guys are probably in the opposite. If you're in America, you're, you're probably in the winter. We're in, we're in summer here in Australia, and it's absolutely ridiculous right now. <laughs> it's, it's 40 degrees, which in Fahrenheit, I think that's something like 100 degrees um, F Fahrenheit there. So anyway, you, you're probably in the snow because I hear America's got a lot of snow, and wherever you guys are, if you're not in America, UK, or wherever it is, um, I hope you guys are having a great uh, new year. So without further ado, I want to get into this series and go through um, a couple of things with the, the mixing of this track. What I wanted to do was actually go from scratch um, and show you guys behind the scenes of creating the track. But before I did that, I wanted to get into some tips before I get into that whole entire series there. So the first tip that I want to give you guys for the new year is using a gate. Now, if you guys have set New Year's resolutions, obviously um, a gate will be something you'd open and close put something behind you or go through it and create something new. Now a gate kind of works in the same sense in regards to a DAW. So you've got a gate here which is the Studio One version of the gate. It basically allows the sound to come through and you can close the gate to stop it from coming through. Now a gate kind of similarly uh, works in regards to release and attack settings like a compressor. So a compressor has an attack setting and a release setting and basically that allows the attack and release of the gate to be open and closed. And the way I used the gate in this particular mix was to get a certain sound and a pumping sound as well out of a couple of different instruments that I'm using it on. So this gate that I've got set up is in a couple of different locations on this mix. So let me just go through the actual sound of the track first so you guys kind of have an idea of what the track's going to sound like. And then I'll explain to you what I use this gate on and how I did it and the theory behind it. So let's get straight into the way the track sounds. Let's go. You guys kind of have a gist of what it sounds like and the idea of the track. Now, it doesn't have too much going on in the track, and it's kind of like one of those laid back kind of you know tracks that you'd rap over and you'd, you'd just kind of work with the track and do that sort of stuff. I might add other elements to it later on, I don't know, but at this stage, that's what it sounds like. So, what I did with the gate and why I want to show you why it's so specific to this actual video that I'm showing you is this gate does a lot of different stuff. So it's a standard gate that you have in Studio One. So you guys can follow along with this if you um, aren't familiar with the gate and stuff like that and you want to know kind of how it works. What I did to um, set up the gate on a couple of different instruments was first off, I didn't have it on anything at the start. I didn't intend to put a gate on any of the instruments and I thought you know the sound needs to be cleaned up a bit and it also needs a bit of movement inside of the sound as well so you know with the gate you can open and close it the, the gate obviously so it open and closes the door in essence and allows some, some sound to come through and some sound to be blocked out or all of it to be blocked out or um, vice versa so for example on this piano that I've got I'll just isolate this piano and I'll just play that 
Now, as you can see, kind of all of my instruments are all in a bus now, and I've got them all bussed out. So I've got the main bus, which has everything except for the drums. So actually, let me just correct myself. The, the main, yeah, so the main, the drums are going into their own separate um, drum bus here, which goes into this section here. And then I've got all the instruments in this other bus, which I'll just move to there. I can't right now. Um, anyway, so the main bus has all the instruments except for the drums and the bass goes into the main on its own and the piano on its separate bus as well, except for the rest of the instrument there. So let me just play the piano so you can kind of see what's going on with this and I'll just explain to you the gate as well. So first off, let's go through the piano. Okay, so if you just listen to the piano and you kind of hear how it's some sort of movement in it, but it's not exactly um, a compressor movement or anything like that, it's actually the gate that's affecting it. So if I just bring this gate up to the screen, which I think I already did have it there, um, just watch this thing, thing here where the gate says minus 36 and then it goes to zero. That will actually move this, this actual dial here will move a bit. I should say meter. Um, so basically what's happening is the gates being told to open at a certain attack and to hold for a certain you know setting and the release is a certain setting as well. Based on these settings a lot of it was tuned by ear but then I also used the BPM of the, of the track and I got the BPM um, settings as well. So like I've shown you in other videos with BPM I'll just go into my handy dandy page which I don't have open right now. Let me just show you this. So Nick Forever, or Nick Fever, I should say, is the page that I use to check locations of BPM. So usually you'd use this for reverb or delay, but you can use it for other things like compression and also a gate as well. So say, for example, I've got 156, which is the BPM of this track here, and I calculate that. If I go down to this page here, you can see it's got all the release times or the attack times, I should say, if you want to look at it that way. Um, of a compress or a, a delay for a reverb or a delay for a delay, whatever you want to have it on. So you could have one sixteenth note or a one eighth note or a one fourth, whatever the setting is, that's the milliseconds right there. So uh, basically all of these settings here are the ones that I look at and kind of gather where I'm going to set the release and attack settings and stuff like that. Like I said, though, I set this based on you know, what I thought sounded right. So it was that 330 milliseconds, which is kind of similar to the way, I think it was a 1 16th or a 1 8th. Let me just go back there and double check. Uh, yeah, the, oh, sorry, 1 4th was 384. So um, looking at that, I kind of got close to it, but it wasn't exact, but it was good enough for my taste. The release was a very fast release, so I thought I'd need it to go back to the way it was as fast as possible. And that's almost as quick as this can actually release. The hold time was about half that, so you know it just holds it and then releases. Now this is the time. This is a setting that will affect the way the pumping sounds in your inside of your mix. So if you're listening to the piano again, I'll just play it. Now if I just play it without this. You can hear how the reverb just continues on and the sustain of the piano also continues on and that's because of the way that the piano was played with the MIDI. Uh, I'll just highlight the MIDI here so you can see it. So all of this MIDI here, you can see it's got a long sustain on most of the notes and that's fine if that's the kind of thing you're going for, but I wasn't. I want to have some sort of pumping sound within inside the piano. So the gate was the quickest way that I could actually achieve that sound. So. Like I said, that's one thing you can use a gate for. Uh, I also use the gate for this um, sliding or gliding bass, I should say, as well. So if I just play that to you with the piano. So the only thing that the gate is actually doing with that bass is as soon as the bass goes quiet, it removes all of the sound out. Not not as in as far as, it's kind of similar to the way that actually if you were thinking of if you're going to bounce your track out. So say for example, you just bounce the track out right here. 
and you wanted to cut the silence off the tail of the bass, um, you've got a certain amount of tail that leads up to the end of the bass here. And say I want to cut this little bit out of the tail, that's what the gate's actually doing for me. So without me having to go in individually, you know, cutting out the tail or getting a fade and doing that, the gate's actually fading it or cutting it out for me. So it creates a bit of a rhythm and movement inside of the track. And that's kind of what I was thinking that I wanted inside of this track. So hopefully you guys can understand how useful a gate can be. It's also used for vocals if you want to clean out the room sound. If you have, you know, you're recording vocals in a room and you've got other things going on like a drum kit kind of nearby or whatever it is. And you just want to focus on that vocal. You can use a gate to isolate that sound a little bit more to get it more direct into the microphone. Uh, it's not more, not into the microphone, but direct from the recording of the microphone, so it's in your mix and it's a bit more clearer than it would have been otherwise. So hopefully, yeah, like I said, hopefully this has been helpful that you guys can understand. Just throwing a gate on some of your stuff inside of your track, if you want to get movement on the track, you want to get some kind of exciting uh, feeling to the track as well. This will help you achieve that, and it also helps you clear up some of the, the low end to your mix, and also clear up some of the high end if that's what you're trying to get rid of. Um, but generally, a gate is there for anything. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more on this channel because there's going to be some pretty fantastic stuff this year. And like I said, have a great new year, and hope to see you guys soon. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.